Hello and welcome to this presentation on storing your data on cloud. I'm your host. My name is Kirti Devlekar and I'm part of the product marketing team uh, here at DigitalOcean focusing on infrastructure as a service vertical. So in this presentation, we'll talk about the various options you have to store your data on cloud uh, that digital, DigitalOcean offers and some of the newer enhancements or new updates that we've had uh, for these products. Okay, so let's get started. Um, uh, so there are four sections of this presentation. So I'll start with the key takeaways and the overview section, um, followed by I'll talk about the block storage and object storage solutions from DigitalOcean uh, from scratch, and I will wrap up and uh, you know we'll, we'll provide a summary and wrap up from there. Okay, so let's start with the first section that summary and key take takeaways. So there are two main key takeaways from this presentation. One is uh, the object storage and the block storage solutions from DigitalOcean, which is spaces and volumes respectively. Uh, we've had a lot of significant improvements uh, released for these products. And these improvements were done specifically to address the growing needs of SMBs. In particular, uh, volumes block storage is now faster by 50% and the performance of spaces object storage has now doubled and is faster by 100%. The second main key takeaway of this presentation is that all the new volumes or the block storage instances will now be provisioned on latest NVMe drives. And the idea here is you can expect your data to be stored on these high performance NVMe drives, which have very low latency. Okay, let's get started. So um, before I jump in, I just want to quickly highlight the key pillars of uh, you, know, you know how DigitalOcean helps builders. So in some sense, these pillars, uh, all our products and services and offerings we have are built on these four pillars. Um, those are simplicity, competitive pricing, um, the support and community we have, uh, and the reliability of our products and services. So same things apply even for the storage products as well, and we'll get that. Uh, we'll get to the details in a minute. Okay. Um, in terms of our uh, footprint or data centers, we have 15 data centers across nine regions. So North America, Europe, Asia Pacific, and even Australia is now covered, and we have customers across all these uh, different uh, regions and countries. Um, in terms of our solution portfolio, we have compute, storage, networking. Uh, we have comprehensive solutions for these, uh, you know, in, in these areas. We also have managed offerings uh, like databases and also marketplace offerings where you can power up uh, your app, droplet, Kubernetes clusters with like one-click pre-configured VMs and so on and so forth. Okay. So now let's uh, move on to the main section of the uh, main part of our presentation. Um, and I thought the, a good way to start off this presentation would be to start with an analogy. So at DigitalOcean, we have these three different types of storage, right? So the local droplet storage, block storage, and the object storage solution. Uh, you can think of these storage solutions as like, for example, the droplet local storage can be thought of as a locker in a bank. Um, the bank locker is going to be fixed. It does, you don't really have a lot of storage options there. And if you have to uh, really you know, change storage at the droplet level, you probably have to go to a bigger bank or a bank that gives you a bigger uh, or a droplet that has a lot higher storage, or you probably have to you know, think of some other solutions here. But your options are pretty limited there. Now, when it comes to block storage, you can think of this as a safe vault where you can put some structured data in, like maybe something that's very valuable and you don't really want to, you know, have, you know, where you really want to have very few people access it with access keys. It's kind of stored protected in a safe vault here. So the volumes block storage is something very similar to that. And spaces object storage or object storage can be thought of as a warehouse where you have pretty much everything and everything under the sun that can be put in a warehouse. Think of furniture, or you know, you can you can name a thing, and you'll probably find it in a storage. And this storage is more like you know storing lots of everything else, like everything that doesn't fit into, or it's not really you know 
the point is you may you may not want to fit it into you know let's say a vault here so you can put it in a storage or a you know a warehouse here so that's more like space object storage so now that you have this analogy, we'll talk about the main part of this presentation is, as I mentioned, droplet local storage is not something that we're going to talk about, but we will extensively talk about volumes, block storage, and spaces object storage. As these two uh, storage solutions can help meet a lot of your needs uh, and uh, can eventually help you grow your business. So this is going to be a focus for today's presentation. And now we'll jump in into the details. So we'll start with volumes block storage. And before I go into the details of volumes block storage, let's talk about what is block storage. So block storage can be thought of as a storage approach that essentially divides data that needs to be written to a disk into blocks of given size. And the main idea is once an application kind of divides it and puts it in different blocks, let's say if you have to change or update your data, then only the block that, need, that corresponds to the, the, the information that it has changed, it needs to undergo this change and you, know, you don't really have to touch the other blocks. And this really helps you to incrementally or frequently edit small parts of a file or parts of a file in a fast and flexible manner without really having to you know, you know, rewrite or save the whole file itself. Now, block storage is certainly great for such use cases, especially for these use cases that need very low latency connectivity and consistent I.O. performance. So think of databases, for instance, it's perfect for uh, a block storage. Now, when it comes to block storage, uh, there are, although there are many different metrics to evaluating the performance of block storage, three metrics are, where, are that come, are, come to my mind when it comes to evaluating these uh, uh, solutions here. First is latency. Um, then in no particular order, of course, uh, latency, input, output, storage, uh, operations per second, and throughput. So the latency is defined as basically the time it takes for an IO request to be completed. So uh, the lower the latency numbers, the better the performance. Um, as far as input op output operations per second is concerned, or IOPS, IOPS represents how quickly a storage medium can execute read and write commands per second. And throughput kind of tells you the amount of data that is transferred to and from a storage device for a given unit, uh, usually per second. So megabytes per second is a frequently a unit that's used to uh, measure throughput of these devices or of these storage solutions. Um, so uh, so to introduce uh, the storage solution from block storage solution from DigitalOcean, uh, we call it volumes block storage. And it's a high performance business ready block storage from DigitalOcean that is designed for business critical, business critical applications that require high throughput and IOPS. Um, volumes leverages NVMe technology, uh, which provides very low latency for reading and writing data. And the good thing about uh, block storage, uh, volumes block storage is it atta attaches to droplets. So even if you change your droplet, your data on volume still remains and you can also move the data from one droplet to the other uh, and resize it at any time. Um, the other good aspect about volumes is it comes with 99.99% uptime SLA per month and the pricing starts as low as 0.1% per gigabyte per month or $10 for 100 gigabytes per month. Now, when to use volumes block storage? So there are different kinds of applications or use cases. I'm going to cover a few examples here. Like for example, as I mentioned before, hosting a database or website files, uh, block storage is gonna be perfect. Also for storing log files that are generated by applications and uh, uh, especially when applications can generate, generate a ton of data and they need to be written down uh, quickly to the disk without slowing down the application, block storage is perfect for these kind of use cases. There are also other use cases like storing files required for application or game development or running business critical applications such as ERP, CRM, email and storing data sets for AI, ML, which is machine learning, artificial intelligence, and big data. So volumes block storage is perfect for that. Now in terms of performance improvements, we have done, uh, the team at DigitalOcean has sort of done a lot of, has put in a lot of effort uh, to make these, uh, make the solutions, uh, to increase the performance of this solution. So for example, uh, volumes, um, the performance of volumes really depends on the type of droplets it, it, droplet it, it is attached to. So 
whether it is standard droplet or a CPU optimized droplet, you're definitely going to get 50% performance increase um, compared to the past for uh, IOPS and throughput. So the numbers are on your screen. I'm not going to read that. And volumes block storage is also you know, designed to temporarily absorb, uh, you know, uh, spikes in traffic and the way it does it is basically designed to increase IOPS and throughput for that particular duration. We call it as burst mode and again for standard and CPU optimized burst modes we have you know again 50% improvement in uh, you know, the performance of these uh, drives here. So overall volumes performance has really come a long way and uh, we are continuing to make investments in making these products better. So Maybe you want to take, quickly try it out and see if it really works for your use case. And we are really happy to help you along the way. So please uh, feel free to get in touch with us or let us know if we can be of any help. In terms of availability, Volumes is available almost anywhere. You can create a droplet. So there are a few data centers here that we have highlighted. And you, know, you can certainly be, except for a couple of legacy data centers, I think for the most part, you should be able to uh, you know, get volumes in across all these data centers. So to summarize, volumes block storage is a great choice for business looking for low latency, high performance storage solution. And simplified pricing means we are not going to be pricing you based on IOPS or other performance criteria. We have flat pricing across all data centers. So you know exactly what you'll pay uh, with the volumes block storage. Now I'll move on to the next part of the presentation, that is spaces, introduction to spaces object storage. So we'll start with some basics here. So I'll start with what is object storage. So um, think of object storage as this storage approach that manages data as objects, and it's specifically designed to handle large amounts of unstructured data. And when I say unstructured data, I mean things like audio, video, text file, pretty much everything that's kind of, you know, you find these days, uh, uh, you know, data that is generated like sensor data and things of that nature, they're all considered to be unstructured data. And the idea is you put the data inside this object, which has a unique identifier and a metadata field that can be used to access and retrieve data. So what this, you know, what this does is it basically gets your data in the structurally flat environment without really any hierarchy, which means it, you can pr pretty much in theory scale uh, pretty much to infinity here, right? And object storage is great for storing static storage uh, applications. So for example, static storage, for example, applications that need to write data once and read it multiple times. So, um, and the other good thing about object storage is it also lends itself very well to writing or reading data over the internet using APIs, like for example, over HTTPS. So you don't need a virtual machine or a machine or an OS to work with the data files. So that's a good thing about object storage. Now to a key metric, uh, of course, there are again many different metrics for evaluating object storage, uh, but one key metric is RPS. So as the data is returned or retrieved using HTTP based APIs, request per second RPS is a key metric that can help evaluate the performance of an object storage system. And the idea here is, you know, all your requests uh, are basically HTTP commands such as put, get, delete, etc. These are requests and each command um, and the number of requests a storage uh, can, you know, can process is basically measured in terms of requests per second. Now, uh, Spaces object storage is the object storage solution offered from DigitalOcean. It's highly scalable and affordable. And the good news is it comes with a built-in content delivery network, which basically a content delivery network is basically, you can think of it as a network that caches your data from a centralized location and it caches to, you know, in this case, 25 local or global points of presence. So uh, 25 locations across the world, uh, your data is cached. So that way, let's say if your user is in Europe and you don't want to access your application or data that is hosted in, let's say, uh, North America, uh, Spaces takes that data, replicates it across multiple different places so that you, the request doesn't have to come all the way up to uh, the United States to serve it. It can be probably served with, let's say, a file download or something that can be served pretty close to where the user lives. So 
data is in some sense you know geographic ge geographically or spatially distributed so uh, that improves the latency times and it comes in for free with spaces spaces is also s3 compatible so you can use various s3 clients and tools to easily manage spaces uh, it's also simple to use and the pricing starts at five dollars per month for 250 gigabytes now, when to use spaces object storage? And again, so I think the biggest uh, benefit of using object storage is you can access data from internet using HTTP commands. So anytime you want to access data uh, for your application, uh, you can use spaces object storage. Um, it's also good for videos, for streaming and distribution, uh, big data analytics, storing backups, game or application development. So all these are different use cases where spaces object storage is perfect. Uh, in terms of performance improvements, as I mentioned, the performance of Spaces Object Storage has doubled. So the read and write uh, RPS has doubled from what it was before, and also the uh, the RPS per uh, the max RPS per client IP that has also doubled. So the summary here is uh, Spaces is now uh, you know highly performant, and you can continue to expect more and more performance improvements as we go along. Uh, in the future. In terms of availability, it's available in six global markets, San Francisco, New York, Amsterdam, Frankfurt, Singapore, and Sydney. And no matter which location you use for spaces to store your, store your data on spaces, it is cached across 25 spatially located servers across the globe. And uh, yeah, so that way your data can kind of gets to live closer to where your users are. All right, so to summarize and wrap up, uh, volumes and spaces both provide an excellent solution to address the storage needs of businesses looking to grow and scale on our platform. And as I mentioned, you will always know what you'll pay with monthly caps and flat pricing across all data centers. With this, I thank you for taking the time to watch this presentation. Uh, um, see, you, see you again next time. Bye-bye.